Right guys, sorry for the uh, break in gameplay there, but we are now back from our lunch break and we are going to crack on with episode 2 of Back to the Future the game. So once again I'm going to go Michaelis, I'd like you guys to enjoy the story without having some really obnoxious commentary going on uh, over the top of it. So once again enjoy and I will speak to you at the end of this episode. So this next one is Get Talent. What's happening? I don't know. Unless uh, tomorrow's newspaper. Do you still have it? Yeah. Local accountant beaten. Left for dead. Local accountant Arthur McFly was severely beaten and left for dead on the steps of the Hill Valley Courthouse last night. They're gonna kill my grandpa? Tannen's goons, no doubt. Probably in retaliation for Arthur answering that subpoena you delivered. What are we gonna do? I'm not sure what we can do. According to this, your grandfather was dumped on the doorsteps of the courthouse five minutes ago. My dad's picture is disappearing. That's the time stream catching up with your grandfather's fatal wounds. Which means your father will never be born, and neither will you, unless... When did you last see your grandfather? <laughs> Four o'clock, in the town square. Let's give him enough time to make his deposition. Right. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. That shouldn't be a problem in your case. I mean, you were in jail. All right, let's get moving before the police find us. Freeze! Ah. Step out of the car with your hands up. What was that? What was what? Crap! I heard something back there. I think you're mistaken, officer. Well, looks like I caught me a fugitive. Carl Sagan, the speakeasy arsonist. A legend speakeasy arsonist, if you don't mind. What the heck kind of buggy is that? Stay back! It's a prototype, still untested, liable to blow up at any moment. Or suddenly take off without warning! Is that so? There it is again. I think the night air is playing tricks on you, officer. What is it, some kind of foreign job? A German or something? Not at all. This is solid American workmanship. Looks like something out of Buck Rogers. A year from now, everybody will be driving these babies. Huh. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a promotion in this. You're getting to be a valuable commodity in Hill Valley. Well, that's very gratifying to hear. Hey! Stop! Doc! Go! Save your grandfather! 
I'll be fine until you get back. You got it, Doc. What was that? Four fifty-five. Hardy's got to be in there somewhere, spilling his guts to the DA. There he is. All I got to do is get to him before. Mr. Corleone. I was wondering if I could do a little follow-up interview with you about the plight of poor Mr. Sagan. My sources indicate that Judge Brown will be setting him free tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on that. What's that? Nothing. Listen, can we talk later? I've really got to get to the courthouse right now. Really? Why? My grandpa's uh, being sued for uh, alimony by his niece. It's, uh, it's complicated. Oh, well then. Carry on. And do put that vicious dog of yours on a leash, will you? We have laws about that sort of thing, you know. Sure, no problem. Ah! ah! Oh, come on, yesterday, Marty. Stop talking. Get moving. Einstein? Einstein, what is it, boy? Stay, boy! Crap! Einstein! Is it a squirrel, Einie? You want to play? Okay, let's play. What are you up to? I am not bonking myself on the head with a stick. I don't think I can throw the stick that far. Want the stick, boy? Want to chase it? Go get it, boy. Where are you going, boy? You're killing me, Einie. Is it a Okay, let's try this again. Go on, boy. Einstein. Bad dog. Oh, come on, Einie. I haven't got time for this, Einie. Come on, boy, heal. We gotta save Doc. Go get her, Einie. You! Oh! Get this mangy animal away from me! Oh, come on, Einstein. Get away from the nice lady. My shoes! Einstein, no! No! Way to go, Einie. Now to get into that courthouse and grab Artie before Tannen's guys. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Hey. Oh, God. Um, hey. According to my calculations, the rotary engine for a full-scale rocket drill requires 1.21 kilowatts of power. Can you check over my work to make sure? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. But I need to get to Arthur. Why? I have to brief him on what to say to the DA. Oh, are you the legal expert now? Come on. Shouldn't we be getting on with our work? We're on a strict deadline, right? Sure. You start without me. Turn around and start walking and I'll... I'll catch up to you in just a few minutes. Huh? Oh, hell. Oh, my God! What the hell is that? What's what? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, I, I mean before, while I was walking towards you. I wasn't talking to anyone. I was working on equations for my rocket drill. 
Uh, no, I mean after. Uh, never mind. Let's get going. Follow me. I thought I'd never leave. At least now I have a clear shot to the courthouse. You gotta come with me. Look, you're in a lot of danger. What do you mean I'm in danger? No time to explain, Gren. Artie, just promise me you'll stay at the police station until- Artie McFly. Just the guy we're looking for. Hey, fellas. Run! Get him! Artie? Ah. I better pick up their trail before I start fading out again. Looks clear. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. Buddy, how's my favorite accountant doing? Oh, I've been better. I'm so sorry to hear that, McFly. Trixie, take a powder, doll. We got business to discuss. K.O., you boys play nice now. Mwah. Nice to see you again, Artie. You too, Miss Trotter. Yeah, yeah, we're all happy as clams. Now scram. <sighs> Are you guys stupid? What are you thinking? Bringing this fish food to my doorstep. We just thought that was your first mistake. Thinking. Look at me. Do you ever catch me thinking? Huh? Uh... Don't answer that. Look, just drag him inside, find out what he told the DA, then get rid of him. I think we can handle that. Good. Now, if you don't mind, I've got an arsonist to snuff out. And will one of you slobs start hauling these crates in? We're on it, kid. So far, so good. Huh. I, I better get in there quick. Contents. One winged goddess. Oops. Hmm. Nice fit. Here goes nothing. Get the crates, cue ball. Stir the soup, cue ball. Clean out the blood stains, cue ball. Shit. I'm not a gangster, I'm a freaking butler. Now, which one of you guys goes in first? Jeez, for a gal with no arms, you sure is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Ow! Do you mind? I'm trying to conduct a professional interrogation over here. Where should I put this? Just shove it behind the bar. I'll just shove you behind the bar. Mm. Come on, Artie. Jeez, how much chloroform do you put on that rag anyway? Why? Because I'm having a hard time bringing Sleeping Beauty here around. Uh, uh, Let me see. Uh, hey, Artie! We got a few questions about you and the DA. D-A-D-E-D? -E -D? 
Mm -hmm. See what I'm working with here. Seems to be catching. Zane, wake up. Oh, sorry, boss. This stupid cold got me wiped out. <coughs> well, try to stay awake long enough to finish that poster, will ya? We got a club to open in a few days. And turn off that sign, would ya? Up, sleepyhead. Ooh, no wonder Artie's so out of it. I hope the sisters of mercy approve of our. Uh, I'll get caught for sure if I try that again. I don't want to waste my chloroform on that. Hey! Hey! What was that? Must be some wiring problems with the emergency button. Stupid cold. Not till he's gone. Oh, God. You're trying my patience, Artie. I can't take that. Zane would know something's up. <laughs> Still? Come on, Artie. Oh. I gotta get rid of these guys before Artie wakes up. Come on, Artie. Oh. I gotta get rid of these guys before Artie wakes up. What do I spy with my little eye? Word games? Wake up, sleepyhead. I'll get caught for sure if I try that again. I uh, think there's a way we could get Rip Van Winkle here talking in his sleep. Yeah, I sleep talked once. That's how I ended up married to Mildred. Remind me to sleep slap you later tonight. Wow, not bad. Oh, hey guys, I don't feel so. Zane, wake up, you lazy bum. Must have been the cold. Cold my eye. He's been dipping into the inventory. The inventory. One more on down, two to go. This is gonna be the swellest speakeasy in Hill Valley. It's gonna be the only speakeasy in Hill Valley. Oh, right. Funny how the competition sort of, uh... I can't chloroform a guy from across the room. He's too far away. Hey! hey! You hear something?
The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. I hope the sisters are merc- See a proof of our redecorating. <laughs> Oh, God. The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. McDermott's Canadian whiskey. I hope the Sisters of Mercy approve of our redecorating. <laughs> Seven, twenty-three, thirty. Hmm. A combination to a lock? Ow! Aye, aye. What the? I think we blew a fuse. Well, go up to the soup kitchen and get a new one. Why me? You'd rather hang around and talk to this guy, huh? We days are here again. Yeah, I'll just get that fuse. Wake up, sleepyhead. Nah, I don't think so. about 40 years. Is anyone Whoa. down there? Everything's spinning. Come on, Artie. Let's get out of here before these jerks get a chance to kill you. Wait a minute. They were gonna kill me? <sighs> Great. This isn't funny, guys. Is anyone down there? Perfect timing. Hang on, Grandpa. We've got a pickup to make. Need a lift? I thought you'd never ask. Ah, what's he doing here? It's a long story. Oh, son of a... And then I carried Artie to the DeLorean and came back to get you. Fascinating. So we can go home now, right? Not yet. We still have this loose end to tie up. No, don't tie me up again. He's coming around. So please be careful. You won't be safe in Hill Valley as long as Kit Tannen remains at large. Don't worry, I'm going far away from Hill Valley, and I'm never coming back. No! no. He's got to hook up with Grandma. What's her name? Uh, it's Sylvia. You know a woman named Sylvia? No. Well, she knows you. We'll know you. It's vitally important that you two meet. Oh, I get it. You want me to be part of some undercover sting operation. No, possibly. Yeah. Are you G-Man? Uh-huh. Something like that. Sure, anything for Uncle Sam. I'll stay nearby and wait for this Sylvia. But in the meantime, I'll lay low. Good man. When can I expect to see you again? That was a close call. You think it'll be okay? You're not fading out, are you? Besides, Arthur will be completely out of danger come August 25th. August 25th? That's the date Kit Tannen is finally put behind bars. How's that picture of your dad? Still there. Good. Let's get out of here before we accidentally elect Hoover to a second term. Well, 
everything looks okay. Are you sure? See, McFly residence. So, want to come in? Maybe hang out a while? I want my dad to see for himself that you're still around. I'd love to, Marty, but... You've got to go. I understand, Doc. You've got a life to lead, kids to raise and all that. No, I've got to go to the bank and stop that estate sale you told me about. Oh. Oh. You go find your pop. I'll be back within the hour. See you soon, Doc. All right. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. Another day? Dad, what are you talking about? Marty. No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in. This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Get Dave and Linda. They left town years ago, which you would know if you really were Marty. How can I convince you? Tell me something only Marty would know. Ah. When I was eight, when I was eight years old, I set fire to the living room rug. That's right. Oh, my Lord. What are you waiting for, George? Let him in. Stupid locks. Marty! Oh, my God, Dad. What happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff. I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? Yeah, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. Biff, what happened to you? When I left here, you were kind of afraid of my dad. Afraid? <laughs> <laughs> no Tannen ain't never been afraid of no McFly. <clears throat> Biff! So now the Tannins are some kind of minor league mafia? Hey, watch who you're calling minor league. The Tannin Gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. No way. <laughs> you don't believe me? Biff, no! Bang! <laughs> Check it out. To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. That's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California. Ugh. I got a question. <laughs> what are you guys doing here anyway? It's that time of the month. Time for Georgie to pay up. Well, we usually take the payment in cash. But this month, we can take it out of your hide. Ooh. Tell me, how long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. Here's what I still don't understand. Why can't you pick on somebody else? We do! We pick on lots of guys! It's kind of our thing. And another thing. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back! The thing with the manure truck? Which one? Ooh. 
here's what I still don't understand. What about my mom? I mean, how did she end up with my dad? Beats us. Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. Okay, but... Where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Ugh. And another thing. Look, can't we bury the hatchet already? Even better idea. I bury this nine iron up your backside. Ugh. One more question. What the hell did you do to my dad? Your dad's been in that wheelchair since before you were born, butthead. And you better hope he has a spare, because you're going to need one in like three seconds. Ugh. Okay, tell me this. No more questions. Ugh. Okay, tell me this. No more questions. Ugh. I was wondering. Don't. And another thing. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back, so the kid gloves can come off. Ooh. Hey! Let me ask. Shut it. Ooh. Let me ask. Shut it. Ooh. I was wondering. Don't. I was wondering. Don't. Okay, tell me this. No more questions. Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley messes with the Tannen family. Get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding! Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez, they robbed the arcade? We've got to go back to the day Kid Tannen was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannens. Not an option, Doc. Punch it. Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, a singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen's speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. 
You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Huh, looks like Emmett's been busy. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown! Why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Mike. Mike? Mr. Corleone, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Oh, water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Einie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now, where's that speakeasy? This is where Doc said he'll be after he gets through stashing the DeLorean. Cool. Frankenstein. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Who said you were worthy? Euronymous Bosch? Take a hike, Squirt. Who said you were worthy? Joe Piscopo? Who died and made you boss? The old gray mare? Who told you to come here? Doris Day? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Boss Hog? Who died and made you boss? Bruce Springsteen? 
who died and made you boss. Am I? Who told you about this place? Place to call to my travel agent. What's the big idea? Uh, stitch in time saves nine. Ah, settle down, mister. Why don't you wait outside and take a nap? Napkin, please. I've made a mess. Ew. Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. Who is the king of Siam? Could you repeat that? Who is the king of Siam? Am I? What will you do if I let you inside? Wait till Wednesday? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Am I? Who said you were worthy? Am I? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? The old gray mare? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Euronymous Bosch? Who said you were worthy? Am I? Who said you were worthy? Joe Piscopo? Who died and made you boss? Am I? Who died and made you boss? Boss Hog? What will you do if I break your leg? Lego your ego? Where do you live? Livermore. Welcome to L Kids, sir. Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L-Kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am. Hey, I know you. You're Parker. Oscar Danny Danny Parker. Hill Valley PD. Have we met? You look my failure. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? 
Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Whoopee! Yeah, now, about those troubles... Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't we have Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. Did you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. So about those troubles. Troubles? Ha! <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want to party! Whee! See you later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? You in? Why not? Gonna put it all on red. Twenty nine. Ah. The shrew. Didn't burrow deep enough. El Kid. I still don't get it. It's like that El Cid place down in L.A., only it's El Kid. Ah, okay, I see. Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, man, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here. Excuse me, are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. Hey, your songs seem to have a big effect on Officer Parker over there. I am humbled and gratified that my musical gifts have fallen upon such receptive ears. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some... Hey, Toots, any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? I really like your voice. Thanks. You should hear me when I ain't so under the weather. You're sick? Oh, yeah. Sore throat. That's why I'm giving Q-Ball so many extended solos tonight. I kind of wondered about that. Do you know Sister Christian? I don't do religious tunes. You were telling me what a great guy Kid is. Yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know. You don't break up with a creep-like Kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets, but I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? 
Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now, but Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Hey, you can trust me. Come on, what's the dirt you got on Kid? Nix on that. I ain't spilling nothing till I talk with Arthur Mc... <gasps> F-L-Y. Hey, if I arrange a meeting with Artie, could you use that insurance of yours? Use it? Heck, if what I'm sitting on pans out, I could send that bozo all the way to the big house. I'll see what I can do. How about Stairway to Heaven? I sing popular songs, kiddo. You want hymns? Go to a church. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. Hey, nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? The name's, uh, Michael Corleone. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on, what's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fides. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't. Even. Blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Mikey Corleone here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches. Put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> Hey, kid. Want a light? Listen, Shorty. I got a lot of respect for J.J. Valenti, so I'll let you get away with that joke twice. But there ain't gonna be a third time, understand? Gotcha. He's back. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a Depression-era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. 
When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed, eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost her nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Any sign of Artie? Haven't spotted him yet. Are you sure Tannen's supposed to be arrested by Officer Parker? The guy's a mess. Mess or no mess, I'm absolutely certain that Parker's your man. In fact, it's his arrest of Tannen that will eventually lead him to become Hill Valley's chief of police. That seems really unlikely. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Mike, you're just in time. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this. When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. 
Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but Heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. And once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einie stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into tan and speakeasy to listen to her. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Hey, Edna. Mr. Corleone, what can I do for you? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh? What is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public you safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. 
Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey boy, take away for this. Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good. I don't think it would go there. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she... Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary... <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to... Come up for me, Q-Ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Atta, girl. Hey, you. Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you... I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella, I think you're done for tonight. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing, I... Ah! Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What happened in the alley with Arthur? 
I don't want to talk about it. What about your insurance policy? There ain't no insurance policy. After tonight, I'm tossing it in the furnace and burning it up. Come on, Trixie. Can't you tell me what happened out there? No! Then at least give me the evidence you got on Kid. No, I need to deal with myself. As soon as tonight's set is over, the evidence goes up in smoke. I don't care. But what are those? Are they lyrics for one of your songs? I haven't memorized them yet. You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Pick it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. I don't care. It's the lyrics to her song. Danny. You! Should you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Hey, back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. All your fears are foolish, Betsy. Maybe you know, dear, that I'm in love Danny. with you. Danny, you. So about those troubles. Every they all started on. Uh... Uh, June 14th, I was chasing down one of Tan's boys when this, uh, this car straight out of Buck Rogers popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. Well, not one, but... Two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty, as in Jennifer's grandma Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. You've got a secret? What is it? I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen. Yes? I like you. You're my new best friend. <laughs> so about that secret. I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen. Yes? I like you. <laughs> You're my new best friend. <laughs> you know, drinking that much is really bad for your health. What are you, my mother? More like future grandson-in-law. What? Never mind. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Danny. You. Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. See you later, Danny. I'll be here.
Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial-like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to start bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on her knees, crying, and begging for McFly's life. So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Emmett! No, no, no time for chit-chat. I've got a rocket car to recover. Emmett! You get down from there before you hurt yourself! Hurt myself? <laughs> You're far too cautious, Miss Strickland. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Things are getting worse, Doc. In order to keep Artie safe, Trixie's gonna destroy her evidence against Tannen. You have to stop her! How? The only thing that would make her turn on Kid now is if she welched on the deal and killed my grandfather. Well, you can't let that happen. Doc, Parker's in worse shape than we thought. We've screwed up his life so bad he's been dumped by Jennifer's future grandmother. Ah, I know. Marty, it's more important than ever that you get Officer Parker back on his destined path. If Jennifer never exists, then I'll never take you to 2015 to save your kids. Then old Biff will never... Paradox City. Got it. I talked to your younger self about Frankenstein. He's really looking forward to it. Oh, I was never worried about that. I wouldn't miss that movie for the world. This whole ticket isn't about to disappear. I sort of envy me seeing it for the first time. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty.
Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Hey, bartender. What'll it be? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, Bob. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on when all this goes away. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. Got any tips for getting Parker in the right frame of mind? Well, I ain't no Carl Jung, but uh, I've noticed that when he's boozing it up like he is tonight, Danny Boy's particularly receptive to the lyrical stylings of Miss Trotter. Huh? Yeah, some guys are inspired by great works of art, others get their ideas from lounge singers. Go figure. I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Peps, uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. So is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Wrong guy. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I talked to Kid. Oh? He told me about Artie. Oh. It was awesome of you to plead for his life. And it was... Uh, awesome of Kid to spare it. So you see why I gotta get rid of all the dirt I got on Kid. As long as he's loyal to me, I gotta stay loyal to him. Nice caricatures up there, huh? Yeah, Zane's an ace cartoonist. But it's kinda hard for me to look at all those faces knowing the guys they belong to are all six feet under. Okay, so Kid spared Artie's life, but that doesn't make him a saint. Believe me, no one knows that better than me. But if Kid can let Artie off the hook, I guess I can let him off the hook. Know what I mean? About Artie McFly. What about him? Have you heard from him? Is he okay? I think something bad might have happened to him. What? You mean Kid went back on his promise? Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Oh, no. Oh, poor Artie. Poor sweet little Artie. I know. That rattlesnake kid! He can't get away with this! You gonna turn over the evidence you got against him? Am I ever! Just watch me! Wait a minute! What evidence do you have that kid bumped Artie off? Um, it's just a hunch. Keep your hunches for the racetrack! It ain't nice to get a girl all worked up over unsubstantiated rumors! Break a leg out there. Thanks. I don't think my caricature would look good there, or anywhere for that matter. I don't think they'd be interested in my caricature. Do I really look like that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? About Artie McFly. What about him? Have you heard from him? Is he okay? 
I think something bad might have happened to him. You think? Yeah. And you think Kid did it, so you think I'd better hand over what I got on him. Yeah. Well, I think you'd better come back when you got something a little more solid. Break a leg out there. Thanks. You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Voila! Nice job. Now go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. I don't think anyone will be interested in this caricature until it's hanging on the wall of Kid's Club. Nah, hmm, looks like someone's about to be added to Tana's Wall of Fame. Sorry about this, Dad. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Okay, so Kid spared Artie's life, but that doesn't make him a saint. Believe me, no one knows that better than me. But if Kid can let Artie off the hook, I guess I can let him off the hook. Know what I mean? About Artie McFly. What about him? Have you heard from him? Is he okay? I think something bad might have happened to him. You think? Yeah. Well, I think you'd better come back when you got something a little more solid. I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Artie! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Artie was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died, Artie was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history, accounting... And I made a big discovery while I was copying all of kids' books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Kid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book... Hey, copper! He's not interested. Figures. Half the police force is in Tannen's pocket. Give me a few minutes to work on him. I've got a hunch he'll come around. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again. Danny. You! 
So about that secret. Look, buddy, I like you, but I'm just not in the mood to be spilling secrets right now. Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Sharing love, they're not meant for blaring love. Whisper in my ear, so no one can hear. Shh. Whisper in my ear, let me read you soft and clear. Don't make it for TC. Danny, you. So about that secret. Oh yeah, my, my secret. Ear. Well, you're my so pal, no so I can tell can you, hear. but don't let it get out. I've been working for Tannen for over a month now. What? It's true. All I gotta do is look the other way while evidence is getting destroyed or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line and Tannen makes sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope. Great deal, huh? No, not a great deal. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? What about Artie McFly? Hasn't he been missing for two months? That's true, and all signs point to a tannin job. Oh god, I've made a horrible mistake! I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back! But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> I guess now I know why you won't arrest Tannen. You're working for him. Bingo! Come on, Danny. Pull yourself together. It's not so bad. Not so bad? I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> you know, drinking that much is really bad for your health. What are you, my mother? More like future grandson-in-law. What? Never mind. Hang in there, Danny. Oh, God. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Still working on those I don't care lyrics? What can I say? Memorizing ain't my strong suit. Break a leg out there. Thanks. El Kid. I still don't get it. It's like that El Cid place down in L.A., only it's El Kid. Ah, okay, I see. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, man, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here.
Edna. What? What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. A goal that you could name. Reclaiming your good name is what you ought to do. You should care. You should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue, for you should care. Catchy. You really think so? Yeah, it's uh, got a good hook to it. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. Do you think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics? I've uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure. Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Hey, thanks. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Welcome back, sir. Looks like Parker's still parked. Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. You should care. Much better song for her. turn my life around sure you can you know what i used to be a good cop and yeah i've had a few bad breaks possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car but i'm a good man yeah and all i need to do to win betty back is be the same good man i always was and let the chips fall where they may all right hey miss trotter you wanted to speak with me to my louse of an ex-boyfriend. I don't know. Rats. I told the chief we need a team of bloodhounds like they got over in Placerville. Yeah, but in the meantime... All right, everyone. Party's over. Everyone out of the speakeasy. Speakeasy? You're mistaken, officer. This is an ice cream parlor. <laughs> nice try, you. Out!
Corleone. Would the Valenti mob be willing to help, uh, defuse this little situation? Hmm. I don't know. The Valenti mob doesn't like being associated with losers. Hey, we ain't begging here. Kid just thought JJ might like a piece of the action. Especially now that he's just caught the speakeasy arsonist. Wait, you mean... Doc? Doc? You ain't with the Valenti gang at all, are you? What do you know about the arsonist? Come on, you. Off to the station house. Kid's gonna get you, rat. He's gonna get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks to Miss Trotter's evidence, the entire Hill Valley police force is out looking for Kid and his goons. You don't understand. We've got to find him now. He's captured a friend of mine. Who? Uh, never mind. Don't worry. We've got the entire town square sealed off. If Tannen's within a mile of here, we'll find him eventually. Uh, I don't think we have time for eventually. Hey boy, how you doing? Good dog. Parker must have confiscated this hooch from the speakeasy. It's locked. Ew. Irving Kid Tannen. Guess he dropped this on his way out. It's empty. Figures. Cabbage crates. It's empty, so what's the point? Hey, Einie, get your nose over here. All right. I really don't think Tannen and Doc are with Herbert Hoover, Einie. Okay, okay, I'll check it out. Button. It's empty, so what's the point? All right, Doc, here I come. Corleone! What are you doing here? Uh, never mind. Come here and help me get rid of this stinking arsonist. Edna? I caught her planting dynamite while he was clearing out the soup kitchen. Guess Sagan was innocent after all. I was researching a story, you ignoramus! Tell it to St. Peter's sister. Hey, what's all this? Parker? Tannen, you're under arrest. Get him, Sacramento boy. I can't do that, kid. What? Oh, I get it. Why don't you let go of Miss Strickland and call it a night? Hey, look over there! Watch out! Give it up, Tannen. The alley's blocked off and so are the roads out of town. It's over. Over? Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over. Heavy. Make it easy on her. He's not about to let me in. Yo, Tannen! Make like a tree and die, rat! Hey, 
kid. He led, phony. No one messes with Kid Tannen. I can't get to the car from here. like a tree and die, rat! Hey! Had a girl. Hey, kid! Eat lead, phony! So... I'm afraid I'm finding it difficult to concentrate with all the bullets flying around my head, Mr. Corleone. Right! Make it easy on yourself, Tannin! Tannin's never... So... I'm afraid I'm finding it difficult to concentrate with all the bullets flying around my head, Mr. Corleone. Right! for tennis. Hey, moron! More on this! Come on, kid. You know how this'll end. Hey, kid! Ha! That ain't a real gun. Oh, right. I forgot. I better just get rid of it then. Oh crap. <coughs> hey, he's getting away. Oh no. Yes. No. There. Good as new. Oh, look, Tannen. The judge's son. All right, Parker. I want a getaway car and a clear road to Nevada, or the brown kid gets it. Doc. Marty. Doc? Yes, it's me. I'm talking to you through the radio apparatus my younger self has installed in the rocket car. What's going on up there? It's not good, Doc. Trixie and Parker did their part, but now Kid's holding you hostage. Great, Scott. No kidding. Try to get Kid in the car. Once he's inside, give me a signal, and I'll do the rest. How am I... You! Emmett! You're the cause of all of this, ain't you? You should have known. What kind of gangster's named Michael Colleone? Yeah, well, what kind of gangster's named Irving? Oh! 
Well, Satan! Irving Tannen, I'm placing you under arrest for kidnapping, attempted murder, tax evasion, and smelling like a piece of crap. Tax evasion? Haven't you heard? The feds are practically drooling over Trixie's books. Trixie? That's what you get for killing Artie, you bastard! What? I didn't... Trixie? Artie? All right, Grandpa. My poor car. I believe I owe you an apology, Mr. Brown. Thanks to your ridiculous contraption, Hill Valley's most notorious criminal is finally headed to prison. No apologies necessary, Miss Strickland. My rocket car may have accidentally saved the day, but only because it's a completely out-of-control failure. I need a new idea. If you're willing to listen, I might have a few suggestions. But first, I think we should take in a movie. I'm all yours, Mr. Brown. I think you'll like it. It's all about a brilliant scientist with an overabundance of hubris. Whew. Come on, Einy. Let's go find Doc. Thanks for letting me fly the DeLorean, Doc. This thing's a blast. Are you absolutely sure that everything's back to normal? Totally. Kids going to jail, Emmett's going to see Frankenstein, and there's no such thing as a tanning crime family in 1986. And we remembered Einstein this time, too. Hill Valley crime rate at all-time low. Hmm. Well, except for Grandpa necking with Trixie, I think we're ready to go back to 1986. Do you feel yourself fading out of existence? No. Then as long as your father's still born in seven years, I say, let your grandfather sow his oats. Sowing oats? Is that what's going on with you and Edna? What are you talking about? Emmett and Edna, they're gonna go see Frankenstein together. That's... odd. Great Scott! What? We've got to get back in! This could be disastrous. Doc! Where'd you go, Doc? Relax. Uh. We've got everything under control. Doc? Martin McFly, age 18. Okay, Doc, let's see what kind of nightmare alternate timeline I've landed in this time. Father George of the Lorraine. Hill Valley under Citizen Brown is not quite the contented town you were led to believe it was. A re-education program? What the hell? Please don't swear, Martin. It makes me uncomfortable. Zero demerits until this morning. We're through, McFly. I'll never date such a square again. My own girlfriend thinks I'm a square? The obvious question, Mr. McFly, is what happened to you? Jesus Christ, Doc, what happened to you? Well, there you go, guys. That concludes episode two of Back to the Future, the Telltale series. I hope you have enjoyed, of course. And uh, the preview of the next episode looks pretty damn good, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that is going to be it for me today in regards to Back to the Future. That's two episodes done today. The next two will come tomorrow. 
and the conclusion of the series will come the very next day. So I'm going to let the credits roll. I hope you've enjoyed and don't forget to click that subscribe button if you have done. It would be much appreciated. So peace out.